Dr. Mindy here, and today I want to talk about exogenous ketones. So this honestly is a dreaded subject for me, and let me tell you why. I truly do not believe that there is any shortcut to healing, although fasting provides a very quick path to healing and the ketogenic diet provides a very quick path to healing. I don't believe there are in, in quick fixes, where the, whether they're natural or, or synthetic. So this idea that we could supplement uh, the, keto, the, the ketosis experience by putting something from the outside into our bodies really honestly has me disturbed. Having said that, I'm always willing to let research uh, show me that I am wrong. And I recently was at a conference where Dominic D'Agostino presented. And if you're familiar with his work, um, what is really interesting about his findings and his studies and who he is, is that he got into studying ketosis from a perspective of healing seizures. And um, he's been working on uh, in and out of labs, looking at different ways that we can get our bodies into ketosis to help seizures. So at this presentation, he basically said there were three ways you can get into ketosis. One is you can get into ketosis um, by manipulating your carb amount. Now we've talked about this on my channel before, so go back, if, if that's new to you, go back and watch some of the other videos I did. You can lower carbs to get into ketosis. Those of you that are in my Reset Academy, we've talked about how do you lower protein. You can actually lower protein as well to get into ketosis. And you can also work on increasing your fat. So you can change your diet is one strategy. Second strategy, you can start fasting. So a lot of people in my Resetter group, what they do is one meal a day, but then that actual meal that they eat, they're not as uh, careful about their macros or what they're eating. They rely on fasting to get themselves into ketosis. So that's another way to do it. Now you can combine what a lot of us do and combine the lower carb, moderate protein, high fat with fasting. And yeah, you're gonna get into keto ketosis. It's gonna be awesome. And then the third thing that you can do is take an exogenous ketone. And there are a lot of different ones out there. Like any supplement, you need to make sure that it's coming from a very pure source. But where Dr. Dominic D'Agostino has me thinking differently is he showed how exogenous ketones, and he showed several studies on this, um, have a neuroprotective effect. So when you take a, um, an exogenous ketone from the outside, putting it in, it's usually in the form of an ester salt. Um, they've come up with a lot of different brands now, have powders that you can use. What happens is you raise your ketone levels and that ketone level going up will have a neuroprotective effect on the brain. So where I see this actually really, really helping is in people that we, that we can't get on a low carb diet or who, people who are unable to fast. So kids, this could have a really cool effect on kids with ADD and ADHD, um, maybe even with autism. He talked a lot in this, uh, in this conference that I was at about how uh, when ketones go up, GABA goes up. It, it, causes, it forces your body to secrete more GABA, and GABA is the calming neurotransmitters. So what about all these kids that we have with learning disabilities and intention disorders? And what about uh, Alzheimer's and dementia where you can't really manipulate people's um, carbs and their fasting window in that age, age range either? These are two excellent uh, types of people that would benefit from exogenous ketones. And I would uh, encourage you to look into the different exogenous ketones and see and try them out with those two groups. Now, where does it fit in for those of us who are, you know, everyday people and, and who are just trying to benefit from ketosis? My warning to you is if you do enjoy exogenous ketones, if you have them, if you're using them, is to use them in moderation because you can use them like in a water fast to maybe help you get over feeling really a, a detox reaction. 
You could use them as an assistance to kind of get you over, maybe you're hovering, you've been doing fasting and low carb and you can't quite get into that like 1.0 ketone range. Taking some exogenous ketones to kind of help you move into that range may be helpful from time to time. But what I know about the human body is that any time you start supplementing from the outside in, you send a signal to the body and you tell the body that it doesn't have to do it on its own. And so cholesterol is a great example of this. Um, one, cholesterol has a, a, a neuroprotective um, effect on the brain. And one of the things that we see when people go on statins for a very long period of time is that the liver stops producing naturally occurring cholesterol. And over time, the brain doesn't get as much cholesterol as it needs to stay healthy. So one of the concerns I have, if we all jump into the exogenous ketone world and we start supplementing from the outside in, is that over time, if you do them too much, will your body know when you lower carbs, when you fast, how to make that switch over into uh, a state of ketosis. And I, I was with a group of some of the most intelligent doctors at this conference, and we were blessed to actually sit in a separate room with Dominic D'Agostino and pepper him with questions, and he was gracious to answer so many of them. And this was the general consensus of the group, is that if people rely on exogenous ketones too much, that it may have a more harmful effect down the road of your ability to get into ketosis. Um, even Dominic agreed with that as it should be a temporary um, shot of exogenous ketones to help you through a specific moment of healing, but that if it's done day after day after day, the studies are not there to show what the long-term um, effects of that would be on your body's ability to get into ketosis. So. That's my stance on exogenous. A lot of good products out there. You wanna make sure they're pure, great for the elderly, um, great for kids. Um, and those of you that are using it, using exogenous ketones, um, I, in a temporary kind of slow uh, way, not overdoing it, I think it could be really helpful to get yourself into ketosis or to push yourself past a fasting period. I think that would be great. So, but as always, don't lose faith in your body because your body has this incredible healing capability. And if you stick with it long enough, those cells will repair and they will get you into a, a, a ketogenic state. So I don't want you to lose that ability to, to do that because we were programmed with this incredible healing um, response. And that happens when you lower the carbs and you fast, you get a natural ketones. So um, with caution, that, those are my thoughts on exogenous ketones. Hope that helps. Hey, Dr. Mindy here. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it out to the world. I'm trying to get really cutting edge health information into people's hands. And if you want to see more videos like this, just subscribe to my channel and you'll get updates as to when I go live and new videos that I put out there. Every Thursday, by the way, I do a live video from here and answer your questions. So if there are questions you want me to answer, join me then and I'll make sure that I address them. Thanks. Have an awesome day.